broken. Oh, this one's broken? Yeah, or one of them is and won't go back up. So we just had them down, and Adam's been choosing like these really cool, you know, visuals. Yeah. I like them more. I, I just. I know. It's probably acoustically helping, actually. God, you are so beautiful. 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 I can't wait to feel your presence. Can't wait to touch and feel your presence. Can't wait to check one, two, 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 two. Whoo! One, two. Oh, ba, 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 da. There we go. Much better.
going to start with some meditation. We welcome you here in person and those on Zoom and Facebook. So let's just center ourselves, take a breath, focus on God is the love that I am, or God is the peace that I am. Whatever mantra is singing through your heart right now, focus there and let's be still.
Mm, God is truly the love that I am. So welcome again if you're just joining us out there in virtual land or here. And uh, <clears throat> how about, I don't know, how about if we do a chant? A chant? How about a chant? Yes, we're going to do it. So, busted, drinking a sip of water. Hi, everybody. Reverend Sydney here. Yes, I've moved because we're doing this a different, in a different way tonight. So, Jamie Lula is going to lead us in one of his songs, and we've done this before. It's called We Are the Harvest, and I hope that you will join with us and just give it your all. Go for it. are the ones we've been waiting for We are the love that we seek We are the seeds we are sowing We are the harvest we reap Oh, we are the ones we've been waiting for We are the love that we seek We are the seeds we are sowing We are the harvest we reap We reap. I am. Oh, I am. That I am. Oh, I am. That I am. Oh, I am. That I. the love that we seek we are the seeds we are sowing we are the harvest we reap oh we are the ones we've been waiting for we are the love that we seek we are the seeds we are sowing we are the harvest we reap we are the harvest we are the harvest we reap we are the harvest we reap. Yes. Thank you, Jamie. Oh my goodness, we are the ones we've been waiting for. So let's pray. How grateful we are to stop right in this moment and just recognize there is a power there is a presence, there is a life force, there is a creator, and it's God, the good, and that God is moving in through and as each and every one of us. Right where we are, right now, we are aware that our breath is the breath of God, that our thought is the thought of God, that every experience we have is anchored in God. So tonight, something glorious is happening. This evening is blessed. We bless our beloved Reverend Sydney, knowing that she's going to bring us a word. She's going to bring us a sermon that absolutely incites every cell of our being, and we light up with the love and the peace and the joy and the goodness of God because of this time together. We bless our tech ministry. So fortunate to have these beautiful people constantly give of themselves and serve. We bless, we bless our pianist, Reverend Sidney. And we bless our beloved Jamie, knowing that he's going to bring us a word in song, in rhythm, in music that truly fills our heart, fills our soul. We are blessed today. We are blessed right now because we are saying yes, yes to the truth, yes to good, yes to God, yes to life. We are in the yes of all that there is. Thank you, Mother, Father, God. I release this word into the law of mind where it is made manifest. And so it is. Together we say, Amen. And let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. grateful to be here this evening. God, you are so beautiful. 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 Can take my eyes off of you. Can't take my eyes off of you. Can't take my eyes off of you. Oh, God, you are so beautiful. 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 I can't wait to touch and feel your presence. Can't wait to touch and feel your presence. Can't wait to touch and to hold your hand. Whoa, whoa. God, you are so beautiful. 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 God, can't wait to hear your voice. Can't wait to hear your voice. Can't wait to hear your voice in me. Oh, God. By this love I feel Oh God Use me as a place Where you are revealed Oh God I commit my life To live in peace Oh God I devote my life To live With amazing So beautiful, God, you are so beautiful, God, you are so beautiful. I, I owe everything I am to you, I owe everything I am to you. God, you are so
Hi. Welcome to our living room. So we haven't done this before. This is a talk show format tonight. Jamie and I are going to talk about this idea of resurrected, now what? And so um, I, I always love working with Jamie. We've known each other for, we figured, I figured out it's like over 20 years. Yep. And, and playing with you is always so much fun. And I've been playing your music for years, whether you're around or not. And, so, <laughs> and it's just really a joy. So this idea of coming out from the tomb, as we talked about all this last weekend, it's this whole idea of you're in the goo, you're the butterfly in the, in the chrysalis, and you are able to finally break through, break through, break through. We break down to break through. And this relief of stepping out into the light, only now what? Because I think many of us think that we come out of this experience, this epiphanal experience. We come into this light after being in our, our dark night of the soul, and we think, okay, it's all going to be great. I am going to hit the ground running, only I think we hit the ground running in place. <laughs> I love that, because all I can hear is we come out of the chrysalis, and we're in the light, and it's like, whoa! And yeah. we expect it to continue to be, whoa! And all of a sudden, yeah. that's, eh, you know. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I understand that. I felt that way when I first got sober, it's like, oh, this is it, this is the answer, and it's like, but life goes on. Yeah, yeah. So then the practice comes in. And the practice comes in. So when you did that, and that's, that's such a profound moment, when that happened for you, you didn't have the instant answers for that. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. What did you do that allowed you to keep that, you know, what were the spiritual tools and the things that you were able to draw on in order to keep that sense of, okay, this is a new life. I want to walk forward and I want to walk forward in strength and I want to walk forward in and as much um, integrity as I possibly can. But man, I don't, I don't have a map, mm -hmm. you know. So what are some of the things that you did? Well, initially when I got sober, that first couple years, it was just being an AA and learning to be of service. Yeah. You know, every day I had a commitment, Monday through Friday. I had a commitment, and the, the outside beautification, which was picking up cigarette butts, because when I first got to AA, you could still smoke in the rooms, and it's like the smoke, like from three <laughs> feet down, there was no smoke, but from everything above, it was smoking, and they had coffee cans at the end of each oh, yeah. aisles to put for people to put their cigarettes oh, out. Oh, my gosh. But it was learning how to be of service, <laughs> making coffee, yeah. outside beautification, and then helping another person. Yeah. And it wasn't until I went out uh, after my dad died mm. and got sober again and nine months later in a basically a suicidal depression that a guy interestingly enough by the name of Bill Wilson who's yeah. one of the founders yeah. of the yeah. day, brought me to Agape on a Wednesday night Wow! and I heard Michael Beckwith yeah. and there, did, there wasn't that us and them and I started I just I kept going back which was the first step right. because I heard something that resonated yeah. because I grew up Catholic and I'd kind of turned my back on it, mm -hmm. but I was searching. Yeah. And wow. so probably similar to you. It's like, well, you grew up on this. I this. grew up on this, but I got to tell you, I love that you, I, I, I'm sorry you went through your depression, but I'm really glad you talked about yeah. that because I remember being at a point where I had an experience where I was fired from a job out on the road. Mm -hmm. I was doing a gig. I was out playing keyboards for a show, for Les Miserables, in fact, and I got fired, and it felt so unjust mm. and so, like, such a betrayal and such a disappointment and so much frustration, and I came home. I was in such depression. Um, there was a lot of pizza and a lot of Chardonnay, and there was a lot of chocolate. <laughs> um, and there was finally one point I got so sick of my own stuff mm. that I thought, I've got to just get up and be of service somewhere. I have to take my narcissistic thoughts off of me. What am I going to do? And I ended up going to, not far from me was one of the kitchens where they were preparing foods for um, Project Angel Food. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And that was, and I, I, I'm not sure what it's called now, but it was the version of, the AIDS version of, uh, meals on Wheels, basically, and taking food and basic goods, uh, life's goods and necessities to people who were homebound with AIDS. Mm -hmm. 
And so I went to this kitchen and I, and I showed up about 1130 in the morning and I said, what can I do? And they handed me a broom. Yeah. And that's what I did. I just swept and I swept and the more I swept, I started feeling, wow, there's more than, than what I know. Mm -hmm. There's more than what I know. And I helped them make the lunch that they were doing. And mm -hmm. when I walked out of there, I was a different person. Yeah. I still had my anger. I still had my sadness, but I was no longer mired in this, um, how, could have this how could this have happened mm -hmm. place. I went beyond that from the why into, okay, well, what can I do? What is there for me to do? And service is such a vital part of, of spirituality. Yes, absolutely. And it's really amazing how much that, that matters. Um, and I think it's the difference, and I was just reading um, Richard Rohr earlier, it's the difference between resurrection and resuscitation, resuscitation mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You can, you can resuscitate and, you know, and go back and live the life you were living, um, or you can resurrect and m break free of that shell, yeah. um, those habits. Mm. You know, it's interesting what it reminds me of, and Liz might have been there at the time, when Michael talked about being on the prayer line for United Centers, and a woman called and she wanted to commit suicide. Mm. And he told her to go and lay down. He said he knew that they probably wouldn't approve, but he said, go lay down and let the part of you that needs to die, die. Oh, my God. <sighs> and come back to the phone when it does. Yeah. And he waited for the woman. I mean, this is, I don't, do you remember that, Liz? It was like a, such a powerful story because, you know, so much of the time in our, in our movement, it's like, oh, it's like, it's all good, it's all good. And it's like, no, it's like, how can <laughs> we not. be, if yeah. God is infinite, how can we be with all the aspects of ourselves that come up so that that allowing that part of your die to yourself mm -hmm. to die that part of, that no longer serves and maybe it served it's like a, alcoholism served me for a long time in my life until it didn't right like any addiction until it doesn't serve and then it's like it's going in and it's like it's it's resurrecting from the death of that but then finding out what's beneath it um, that is kind of causing it and, and impeding us living the fullness right. of that God wants us to live. You know, and it occurs to me too that, because I know so many people have spoken about this, and, and I know you know that my husband um, has been working for Betty Ford for a lot of years. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, and working with people who are in recovery. And he talks about the gifts of sobriety, and he also talks about the fact that his, um, his addictions got him to where he was able to step into this world of being alive, awake, and aware. You know, it was that, it got him there. You know, it's that, I, I spoke about this several weeks ago, it's about blessing the broken road. Mm -hmm. That gets you to where, yes. yeah, where you need to be. So that you can own it and you can reconcile it without having dis, to disown it and, and be ashamed of it. Exactly, and not judging it. Right, it's right. It's like, how can you, you take and, and take that part Susie's teaching in class right now and she says you know when you go to that place it's like put your hand on your heart and say it's so understandable that you would feel this way and mm. find compassion for ourselves yeah. which I have not done most of my life I've just gone to that place of mea culpa I'm a sinner I'm bad I'm dirty yeah. I'm all of those things and who'd have thunk to just put my hand on my heart and say it's so understandable oh, that you could yeah. feel that way yeah. with what's happened so understandable and find compassion and let go of the shame. Right. And, in, and those parts that are wounded are the parts that need our love the most mm -hmm. and our compassion the most. It's, it, you're making me think of, I was listening to um, Brene Brown last night on my, my drive home. I love Audible. I have a long commute, so I, <laughs> I'm able to listen to all, and, and hearing her talk, talking about the way we deal with shame, and she mm. talks about three different ways, and I'm hoping I can remember, but we have our shame filters. Mm -hmm. You know, we either um, push it away or, or turn away from it. We turn, um, we, we fight it and, and fight shame with shame. We fight the people who have shamed us. Mm -hmm. Um, or we turn to it to ask the question, you know, what, what do I need to know? What's going on here? Can I learn from you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty profound. You know, this, this thing of being in the tomb um, is, I think it's that. I think it's not denying that, there is, that there, you're in this darkness and there's, you know, this 
growth or the shift where everything is, is changing and you don't know what's going to happen when you walk out into the light. Um, but the willingness to walk out into the light, mm -hmm. um, not too soon, right? And what did I, God, I read something earlier today that, that we're all in the tomb. Um, hold on, this was so good. I found all these great things. Oh, from Lao Tzu, this has nothing to do with that, except that new beginnings are often disguised as painful endings, which I thought was amazing. Um, you can step out of the tomb, and you know, when you do, you should check behind you. Can you see your shadow? Mm -hmm. Six more weeks of winter can make you want to get back into, <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, <laughs> oh, here it is. Um, Richard Rohr says, I want to enlarge your view of resurrection from a one-time miracle in the life of Jesus that asks for assent and belief to a pattern of creation, mm -hmm. a pattern of creation that has always been true, that invites us to so much more than a belief in a miracle. It, it must be more than the private victory of one man to prove that he is God. And there's a quote that I love that I think is from uh, Pablo Casals about every act, every great act of creation requires an act of destruction. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I think the other thing that comes up in that idea of being able to sit with the darkness, it's like, what are you here to teach me? Yeah. The pain pushes right. till the vision pulls. Yeah. I keep quoting Beckwith tonight. But it's the idea of like, what's, what are the questions? Am I asking the right questions of that pain mm -hmm. of that anger right. of that sadness yeah. am i am i getting the answers that they're trying to convey cuz it's 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 something that's germinating mm -hmm. but my perception and in our culture i think oftentimes it's like i don't want to feel pain you know i grew up in a home where it was like you know it, we'd go to the basements of friends' house, and they had those clocks on the wall that it was all fives because it's five o'clock somewhere. Oh, and it's like, and it was usually behind <laughs> oh the bar. God. But that was the culture. Yeah, you it know, was. you drink it away, uh -huh. you drug it away, yeah, you shop it away, you eat it away, and stuff like that. Instead of being with yeah. what's going on, and I think in a period of my life that I experienced a lot of depression, it wasn't until I sat with it. I remember one day, I was living over on Stanley, above a garage, and I said, I'm just going to go sit with this. And I went out on my porch, and I sat in the chair, and I was cross-legged, and I sat, and it's like, basically, what are you here for? Mm. And it was the fact that I was able, instead of avoiding it, yeah. I dropped down into it. Mm -hmm. And what I experienced was that I moved through it a lot quicker. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm not sure that I got an answer at that point, but now I'm because I didn't know to ask the question. That right, question. right. Well, and just the willingness to ask a different question. You know, yes. it's one of the things I work with with my clients often in counseling um, is that we are so eager to, and it's a popular phrase to say, "What is mine to do? What mm -hmm. is mine to do?" And I always caution to ask first, "What is mine to know?" What is mine to, because until you know who you are, you know, who am I to be? What am I to know? Until you have answered and gotten some fundamental uh, um, anchoring in that, then the tendency is to just go out and, and do, 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 instead of to be. To and, be. It, and it's so much more powerful mm -hmm. when you are informed by a higher idea and, and def I like to say, instead of defined by the world, you are divined from that which is inside. Oh, that's so true. I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. Who am I to be? Right. When, because once again, yeah. in the culture, well, you just go out and do. Yeah. You know, but what am I to be? Do you, to do you, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. Uh, do you find yourself, um, th the longer you're on this path, more conscious of choosing between reaction and response to, to something that might be going on? I mean, because reaction being more of a visceral, do you take a pause? You know, sometimes we teach that. I think that's what I'm, I'm learning more mm -hmm. right now. And I mean, it's, it's been part of my th path for so long, and it's like, 
I'm a slow learner. I know none of you are. You're all elevating. I can see you all kind of levitating right now in your seats. <laughs> um, but I'm a slow learner. And it's like I say, this class that Suze is teaching right now is really getting in contact. And being a, being a man, Yeah. culturally, it's like, I got to go do. I got to go. I got to provide. I got to do this and, yeah. and stuff like that. And instead of just being an artist as well. And it's like, uh, so learning to just stop. Um, I had the distinct honor and privilege of spending some time with my friend Scott Meehan last night. His wife passed away of pancreatic cancer on Sunday morning. Mm. And I think one of the greatest gifts I got to do with Scott last night, because she died Sunday morning, he, did, he said, I just wanted to be alone on Sunday and Monday. And I called him and he actually picked up. I just went and I listened. Yeah. I just listened. I didn't try to fix it. I didn't try to tell him it was going to, it's all going to get better. Oh, it's going to get better. Oh, you're going to, it's not, you know, I just listened. I just yeah. listened. So I was just being yeah. with him and not responding. And he talked about some of our other friends that talked to him and he goes, oh my God, it's like, he's like already telling me. It's like, well, hey, I went through this with, People want to talk about their stuff. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. how can I be? And I learned, I, I, I talked to Suze about it this morning. I was just able to be with him yeah. and love him because he's in a lot of pain right now. Yeah. It's sacred. You know, it's, it's that line from the Bible when, when Jesus um, said, you know, will none of you stay awake with me? Mm. Mm. Um, he also said, one of you shall deny me. One of you shall betray me, and four of you will get book deals. But that <laughs> <laughs> God, a setup is everything, isn't it? That was perfect. Um, but it is that, because I know you have gone through death and loss in your family, as have I, and having someone to be with you, and with our practitioner training, we call it companioning. Mm -hmm. And it's just being there and having... If at least having worked through your own stuff enough, healed it enough so that your discomfort doesn't cause you to resist their pain. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Right. And don't we learn as practitioners that there's nothing to fix? Right. Right. You know, and it's like, I don't need to micromanage this. He's mm -hmm. in a lot of pain. Yeah. You know, it was his second marriage, but he was deeply in love with this woman and they had similar goals and visions. And she was taken. She was going to be 57 in, in July. Yeah. And in six months. Yikes. You know? Yeah. So just learning to be and not react. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's part of our the dying aspect of ourselves is learning that. Yeah. And, and aging, you know. Right, right. You know, and maturing. That we don't, because like when we're kids, when we're 20, I just, you know, yeah. I react well, to Well, 50's everything. old. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. I appreciate you sharing that, because we, our own pain can, can inform us how we work and live around other people. Mm -hmm. And most of us, I think, are walking in the world not knowing that we are responding based through our own filters of pain mm. rather than having a, a clean, you know, seeing through the lens of possibility or mm. love or just a, a lens of allowing. Yes. You know, because, yeah. gosh, being around someone who's in pain is really uncomfortable. Mm. I just wish you'd stop now. Don't you think you can, can you get over this now? <laughs> you know, yeah. right? And it's like, well, how many cultures, like the Jewish culture, it's like going in and, and mm -hmm. sitting Shiva. Right. You know, you go and you sit with what's going on. Right, right. In our culture, it's just, just get over it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, like you say, yeah. it, it's time. And it's like, no. And I, I was saying to, to Scotty, I'm like, Scotty, I encourage you to feel everything that you need to feel and yeah. find the people that you feel safe with yeah. expressing those feelings for as long. And anyone that starts telling you that it's time to get over it, it's like, move on. Yeah. Because it's time for them to get over it, maybe. Time, exactly. <laughs> because it's a projection. Yeah, yeah it is. And, because they yeah. can't be with the pain. Yeah. You know, yours or theirs. Yeah. It's really fascinating. This teaching has allowed me to really expand my heart of compassion mm. a lot. You know, I, 
I spent so much time in that idea of principle and truth, which is all powerful and wonderful, and um, extending my muscle or growing my muscle around, compa around companioning and compassion has been actually the thing that has strengthened me the most in my personal life and in my professional life, because I no longer am compelled to say something when I think, you know, well, we've been silent too long. I better fill the space here. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. And being able to, to just allow that is fascinating. And you said something interesting. One of my girlfriends, um, her father, who was 98, made his transition Monday morning at mm. 1.45. Mm. And he's Jewish. And so tomorrow I'll be going to that service and going back to her house and sitting Shiva with her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel honored that I get to be in that space. I really, really do. Um, but then as ministers, as practitioners, as musicians, in this particular teaching, we're around trans transition mm -hmm. and loss probably a lot more um, than a lot of people that we know right. who don't do what we do. Right. Yeah. It's interesting to be around it, but to get these teachings, I grew up Catholic. I was right. an altar boy. I was an altar boy for a lot of memorials. Mm -hmm. And the guys that I were, was altar with, there were three of us, we were in teams. And we would laugh at every memorial. <laughs> we would start laughing and couldn't, and like it was just something about what we did. Yeah, yeah. And there was, but then again, it wasn't culturally taught how to be with that energy. Right. I mean, you did it and yeah. you kind of learned the ritual of it, but not how to be with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So learning how to be with it, yeah. to sit with it. Um, you know, it made me think about, like when you talked about compassion, how has it assisted you in self-compassion? Right. Because that's where I know it, it starts. I mean, have you found that in the context of your life? I am far more patient and compassionate with others than I am with myself. Mm -hmm. I'm getting stronger at, at remembering, oh, that's right, that hurts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm, it's still tender for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I've gotten more conscious about it and more intentional. But yeah, I'm, I, I tend to hold myself to a, to a higher, whatever that silliness, that, that straight posture thing is. Right, because you're a minister. Right, you're supposed that's to, right. You're supposed to be able to handle it, and you deserve <laughs> compassion, just like everybody else yeah. does. We yeah. all deserve it mm -hmm. from ourselves first, right. you know? And there's a birthing in that. Oh, my gosh, yeah. You know, there's so many aspects that I looked at um, as far as what do we draw on when we have come out of that tomb or, mm. or the womb. It's, is it a tomb or is it a womb? And I choose to think of it as often um, a womb, which still hurts when you're pushing out of there, right? Yeah, because birth is painful and, and messy. messy. Yes, <laughs> it really, really is. And so there are a few tools. And one of them, because you were talking about going to AA meetings every day, mm -hmm. community. Yes. Community yes. is really such a vital part. And so many of us, have not had that for the last two years. Mm -hmm. And now we're entering back in, and I think some of us have forgotten how to do that. Mm -hmm. It took me a while to figure out, what, what is this? What is, why are all these people, what is this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's been very interesting getting out in a few places mm -hmm. and going and, you know, Floyd Lula just did a concert up in Santa Cruz. We did the uh, installation yes. for um, Elijah, Christopher up at CSL Santa nice. Cruz and we did the installation then we did a concert then we did Sunday service and you know each event there were you know 100 100 people or so and it was I forgot I didn't forget but it's like you just recognize after having been denied it for so yeah. long the sacredness yeah. of community yeah the sacredness and the holiness of being uh in that hallowed space mm -hmm. with people that are wanting to drop to that same level. Right, or, right. Yeah. We had interesting experience. We have just come back to doing two services um, as of, I guess it was March, 
um, March or April, March. And something happened that first day that we were back in the two services. We're singing the peace song at the end. We still do it because it's still an anchor for so many of us. And I looked out and people had joined hands again. Mm. And I'm, I'm getting truth bumps just thinking about that because we had not done it in so long. We had not held hands and sung. Mm. And it just is, it's, you know, we've got sanit hand sanitizer everywhere, <laughs> you know, so we can handle this. And another one that was f interesting was we had our Easter egg hunt. Did any of you, did you go to the Easter egg hunt? Yeah. It was really lovely, wasn't it? Did you notice what I did, which these kids between the ages of like one and five, that's a whole generation right there, or the beginning of a generation that has not been trained or encultured to um, know what an Easter egg hunt is. Mm. And so they, instead of like bursting out of the doors like they normally would, like, you know, that's the last day of school or something, they kind of crept out cautiously and, and it, was, it was surreal. It reminded me of the scene from E.T. where they come out of this, this spaceship and they don't know, what, what is this place? What are these? And, and, and I saw them like handing Easter eggs back to the Easter bunny, which was fabulous. They'd pick it up and see the bunny and hand it to the bunny. And our beautiful bunny. And <laughs> um, eggs in the kids. I know. <laughs> but let me tell you something. Um, a dad and his little boy, who was about three, came well after everybody had been here. And there were no eggs left and nothing. And they're kind of walking around. And I said, you didn't get here. Well, wait a minute. And so the eggs that you had set down, I took and just quickly put out and found a basket from Reverend Nadine. And he got to have his own little Easter So thank you. See, God always has a bigger idea, right? And I thought you were going to say, and the kids, before they picked up the Easter eggs, sanitized them. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the next generation is doing. I know, exactly, sanitize exactly. Your eggs in your hands. <laughs> I love it. Um, you know, another tool here that I think is really, really crucial is meditation. Mm. You know, learning how to listen, being receptive to that deeper guidance. You know, you step out of the womb um, and we don't know where we're going or what we're supposed to do next. Most we stumble around in the light just wondering, you know, what the hell just happened? Mm -hmm. what, was, what was that? And that was quarantine, you know, mm -hmm. what was that? And so I think the most important part um, of the shift or support that shift is the listening. God is the love that I am. Yeah. God yeah. is the love. I was just listening to that because I actually wrote a chant, God is the love I, and Sam goes, I just wrote something and recorded something for North Hollywood. I think it's given us a lot of time these last two years to sit. Yeah. Like what's coming up, what's going on, let me be with what is. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, I, I have the, uh, the uh, insight timer that I use. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a lot of friends that have the insight timer and every day, I mean, over the last two years, you know, mm -hmm. hundreds and hundreds of times of just, okay, I just need to go get still. And becoming conscious. Yeah. 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 yeah that, and quarantine was, it was really interesting. For me, I came to the realization of all the stuff that I did not control. Mm. And, you know, trying, I was candidating for churches. Try to candidate in quarantine when you can't go in person. Yeah. And there was so much that it was out of control for me. And so it was a, it was a spectacular um, instruction of, about how to just let go. Now, the other thing I want to talk about um, before we wrap up here is that there's a spiritual practice, which a lot of people don't even know is a spiritual practice, and that's tithing. Mm. And I think that tithing is, in fact, what I, um, it, establishing the discipline of both giving and receiving grows our faith, our courage, and our capacity to remember we're not alone. Being sourced by something greater on all levels of life is what tithing reminds us of. It's a circle. So tithing isn't just about writing the check. It's completing the circle. It's right. being part of that circle. Yes. Was tithing a natural thing for you, and how did it strengthen your spiritual path? <clears throat> I grew up with a father who is like, Jesus Christ, they're calling and asking me. They didn't even ask me about my job. It's like they're calling and asking for more money. It's like that yeah, with my yeah. dad. Mm -hmm. That was just the energy I grew up with. Yep. So shifting that energy, yeah. you know, shifting that energy 
and allowing it to be part of my practice. Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of a glass ceiling, you know, yeah. and recognizing that there is supply. And I feel like that in, in our movement a lot. It's like we talk about the infinite supply and there is no lack and no limitation, but I experience a lot of lack and limitation, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and it's like, how can we all move beyond that? Because Ernest was not, Ernest was like prosperous and very open. Well, he came from a poor family and married a rich woman. Yeah. That's a, that's, that's a good demonstration, but we don't all do that. Right. <laughs> yeah, so true. Um, just one more thing I want to say about that is the demonstrations I have had from tithing have been phenomenal. I remember when we first moved to Oregon 17, 18 years ago, and we both were, our money had slowed down. We didn't know quite what we were going to do next. My job as, a, as an artist and um, uh, corporate trainer for Yamaha had ended. And so we sat there and I said, you know what? We, we forgot to give. We've stopped tithing because we were out. We had left uh, one spiritual community. And so we sat there and I went, that's really crazy. So we, want, we wrote a check for $175. I remember that. And we sat and did our treatment out loud, put it in the envelope and mailed it to this church. The next day, my phone rang. And it was the minister from Unity of Portland looking for a music director. Turns out we have grown up much the same path. I was there for 13 years. She brought me in. Music director, I became the leader of the chaplains. I was associate minister there. I was ordained there. I mean, it just was this gift that kept on giving in so many ways because I had finally once again pushed that that giving button. You mm -hmm. just have to push. Yeah. 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 And speaking of, <laughs> we're going to pray and we're going to tithe and you're going to do another song for us. Yes, ma'am. This is awesome. I love this show. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you do your thing and I'm going to come over here and wow. So what a wonderful, wonderful experience. I just invite you all to just take a breath and settle in where you are. And if you are at home, just allow yourself to relax into that space, knowing that we together are entering into that upper room of consciousness. And it is that place of peace. It is that place of deep knowing, of receptivity, of allowing as we move from that darkness into the light of possibility, the light of receptivity, the light, the light of joy, the light of knowing, the light of being part of the greater light. And I know for each of us that that which we have needed to hear on some level has been, has been received, whether it was spoken in words or something that arose from deep within. And I bless this experience that allows us to come together in community and in shared intention, shared consciousness, and be that gift of God, be that light of God, be that truth, that expression, and to come from that womb into a life of God, a life of God, grand, glorious, organized design. So I bless this church. And I bless everyone in this church and around this church. I bless all paths to God, all churches everywhere, all ashrams, synagogues, mosques, temples, whatever that path. And I know that as we move into the world, we are a blessing, both for ourselves, for our families. And I know as we hold our loved ones close in our hearts, they are blessed as well. For that peace of God, which transcends all understanding, certainly fills them too. We surround Ukraine with a knowing of peace and protection. And we bless all those with whom we have had differences, knowing that as we bless them, we are calling forth a higher divine awareness in them and about them. And that is that consciousness of where two or more are gathered. Ah, love happens, miracles happen, and we are blessed. So I'm grateful for this, and I release this word into spiritual law knowing it is already so. We have simply recognized that which is the divine order of the universe, the perfect presence and power of God. And so it is, and together we say, Amen. 
So I want to invite you to take your offering in your hand. And I left my, no, it's over here. Watch me. <laughs> On camera. Here it is. Whoop. And then I drop it. Well, maybe I just want to do it from over here. Okay, so <laughs> I invite you to take your tithes and your love offerings and hold them to your heart. And this is where we awaken that heart. This is the compassionate heart, the loving heart, the giving heart. And say with me, from the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me, multiplied abundantly. Mm, and so it is. So we have another song, don't we? Do you need to tell them how they can? Oh, that's, Liz is going to do that, and she, she's the goddess of, of information. So let me slip past you here. What's your gospel going to be? Living in bondage or free? What's your gospel going to be? Yeah. I got to write a new one for me. Knocking those who knock me down. I give them thanks for being around. Stuck in stories I have told I'm letting go of the old What's your gospel gonna be? Living in bondage or free What's your gospel gonna be? Yeah. I gotta write a new one for me Blessing moments of my shame Making dust out of my pain Calming waters I have stormed I walk where love has been born What's your gospel gonna be? Living in bondage of free What's your gospel gonna be? Yeah. I gotta write a new one for me. Love my neighbor as myself. Rush right in when you call for help. Give my gifts and share my What's your gospel gonna be? Come on now. Uh, living in bondage or free. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's your gospel gonna be? Yeah. I gotta write a new one for me. What's your gospel gonna be? Living in bondage or free. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's your gospel gonna be? Yeah. I gotta write a new one for me. Gotta write a new one. I got not not now. Gotta write a new one for me. Got to write your gospel, people. Gotta write a new one for me. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. What's your gospel gonna be? All right, thank you very much. And here's Liz. Jamie, I love you. Jamie, I love you too. We love you. So wonderful. And you can go to jamielula.com, I believe, yeah. to get all the Jamie stuff, which is wonderful. Always love waking up to some Jamie. Announcements. We have very few. So maybe I'll just say them really slow. <laughs> oh, that's right, that's right. Okay. Um, so, Talking about tithing donations, you can text to give 818-457-3419. You can go to our website and you can go to nhcrs.org give and 
practice that spiritual muscle of tithing. Thank you. And um, you know what, too? I want to tell you that we, because we have le entered the digital age, on the back of your bulletin is a QR code. And you can scan that, and you will be taken directly to where you can text to give, where you can take care of all of that. And we're, we're, we're just up-leveling it, baby. Honestly, that's just amazing. <laughs> I mean, that's too tech for me. That's excellent. Yes, thank you. And um, we have prayer with the practitioner available after service, in person, or on Zoom. If you're on Facebook, move over to Zoom, and you can get your one-minute miracle. Next Wednesday, 6.50 meditation, 7 o'clock service with our beloved Reverend Sydney, and her topic will be, Your Word Has Power Behind It. You aren't alone, and you do not have to bulldoze your prayers when you first go to, when your first go-to is God. Spiritual discipline moves us from stress discipline to bliss discipline. Next Wednesday night, we're going to practice the simple ease of yes, yes. Um, Living a Course of Miracles tomorrow, tomorrow evening with uh, practitioner Jeannie Laporte. Um, it's on Zoom, 715. Everyone is welcome. It's uh, Living a Course in Miracles, and if you haven't done that, it's really terrific. And then um, we have Grief Support Group with uh, practitioner Carol Winokur, and it meets this Sunday, 1 p.m. on Zoom. And if you made a a journey of the heart pledge this year and have not picked up your special gift yet, please see or contact Doreen in the office. Doreen, I didn't get my gift. I, I didn't get my gift. Um, <laughs> we have Zerm virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services. Zoom meditation, you guys, come on, really. Zoom meditation every morning, Monday through Saturday, 7.55 a.m. to 8.15 a.m. What a great way to start your day. So anything else you need to know, any information, classes, workshops, all the goodies that are going on here, just go to nhcrs.org. Love you. Hey, Liz, before you walk off the stage, I'm going to ask you, because I left my notes up there, would you quick thank the people who oh, did this? Who absolutely. Are, yeah, thank you. And then we'll, and I know the crew is just sort of pulling their hair out because I jumped and I'm doing it out of order. But um, when she's done, we're going to sing Blessed Always. And thank you, crew. Um, I love you. I hope you still love me after this. <laughs> We always love you. So, Vess, thank you. Thank you. Mary Catherine O'Hart is holding vigil here for us. Thank you. My beloved sister, Melissa Allen, Facebook Live. Love you, girl. Um, Zoom support, we have Jim Reamers and Alma Alvarez um, helping us out there. And, of course, we have Adam on the lights and sound. And Colleen Butler is our greeter. Doreen, Brenda, Jordan, Blair Thompson, all you guys. We wouldn't be here without you. Thank you so, so much. Um, our musical director is not Sam Krieger tonight. <laughs> no way. She don't look nothing like Sam. Thank you, Reverend Sydney. And um, just, yeah. So, oh, so Thank you. you know, so she sang. She played the piano. She spoke. Where's the tap dance? Oh, uh, I won't do that, but dance? I can rotate your tires. <laughs> That's even better. That's even better. So let's, let's sing out. Blessed always, blessed always, for the arms of God surround us. Let our joy be so triumphant that we rest in God and say amen. Oh, blessed always, blessed Thank you so much for being here. We have coffee and refreshments out on the patio. Let's go there. <laughs>